Hi everyone, I'm Rick Beato. In today's Everything Music, we're going to talk about orchestration. In particular, how to orchestrate a chord amongst the entire orchestra. Coming up next on Everything Music. Okay, what are we going to talk about orchestrating? We're going to orchestrate a big B flat major chord. The same B flat major chord that is the opening chord to Star Wars. We're going to talk about how it's orchestrated, what instruments are playing what, how the instruments work together, what instruments transpose, and how many notes are there per note of the B flat major chord. Okay, so let's start out with this. In the score, it starts out with the flutes, one and two. Okay, now I did a quick mock up of it, and I'll play you it. Okay, now the flutes one and two are playing octave B flats. Listen, that's very simple. So it's just octave B flats. Then there's a piccolo part that also plays B flat an octave above that. Here it is. Okay, let me turn these up a little bit. That's a piccolo. Here's the flutes. You can hear the octave there. Now I'm going to put them together so you can hear the. So that's the two flutes and piccolo together. Now the next instrument that we have in the woodwind section is the oboe, and it sounds like this. Okay, the oboe is split up into two parts, and they are playing octave B flats as well. Okay. So here we go with four different parts. We have the flutes divisi, so parts one and two playing octave B flats. We have the piccolo an octave above the flutes, and then we have the oboes split one and two, all playing B flats. Here they are together, all three. Okay, now we still have, we only have the tonic still. Next we add in the clarinet one and two, okay? Now the clarinets one and two are playing octave B flats as well. And now the clarinets are a transposing instrument, meaning they are a B flat instrument. So when you want to hear the note B flat, you have to write a C. So they sound a whole step below what is written. Okay, if I want to write a B flat, a concert B flat, I have to write a C for the clarinet. Now here are the parts together. This is the clarinet piccolo, oboe, and flutes. Okay, now, the next instruments we add in are the bass clarinet. This bass clarinet is a B flat below middle C. This is a bass clarinet sounds a ninth below where it's written. Okay, so it's an octave and a second. So you need to write a C, an octave above, to get the sound an octave below. It's very confusing, I know, but listen. Okay, so that's that bass clarinet. Now let's hear all the parts together so far. This is with the two flutes, the piccolo, the two oboes, the two clarinets, and the bass clarinet. It's all B flats. Okay, then you get to the bassoons. Here's the bassoons. The bassoons are split into parts one and two. Okay, these are an octave apart as well. Listen again. Okay, and then I'm going to play the entire woodwind section together. This is the whole woodwind section played simultaneously. Now, there is nothing in the woodwinds other than B flats. So one of the features of this Star Wars chord, this opening chord, is it has a lot of roots in it, okay? Now, if you remember from your part writing in college, now some of you have never done part writing in college, there are rules that you learn that are common practice rules. When you have a major chord in root position, you don't double the third, okay? 
And one of the reasons you don't double the third is because it weakens the chord. Well, when you're in a full orchestra, you may have to double the third, but it's the thing is to balance the number of thirds in the chord, you want to have very few thirds. You want to have many more roots and probably less fifths and even less thirds, which is what John Williams does in this orchestration of this chord. Because he wants to give the sound of B-flat. Now let me talk a little bit about the opening of Star Wars. It's really interesting. If you buy the original record of the original Star Wars, it starts with the 20th Century Fox theme, which was written by Alfred Newman. Alfred Newman is Thomas Newman's dad, okay? So that theme, I'd play it for you here, but I can't. Um, that theme, that theme is in the key of B flat. Now, John Williams knew that the opening theme, the 20th Century Fox theme was going to play first, and then there was going to be about 10 seconds or so of scrolling text, and then boom, I believe, or maybe it comes right in. I think it comes right in, actually, right after the 20th Century Fox theme ends. Da -da -da -da. And then... And then you're right into that first chord. So he must have thought, okay, if that's going to play, I need to write this theme in B-flat major. There's no other reason for him to have done it, although B-flat does sound good. B-flat major does sound good. Now, so we've gone throughout the entire woodwinds, and we still have nothing other than B-flats, okay? So then we go into the brass section. The first thing we do is the French horns. Now, the thing about the French horns are... They sound a perfect fifth below what is written, okay? If you want a B-flat major chord, you have to write an F major chord. So you have to write an F major a fifth above what you want, okay? Okay, this is divided up as a major triad with two roots, a third, and a fifth, like you would normally voice a major chord if you were doing four-part SATB writing, okay? So this is your first third and your first fifth, are in the French horns. So the complete B flat major chord is in there. So it's B flat, D, F, and B flat again. Okay? Now, the next thing are the trumpets. Trumpets like the clarinets are B flat instruments. They sound a major second below what are written. If you want a B flat to play a concert B flat, you have to write a C, a step above it, a whole step above it. The Three instruments that are transposing that we've talked about so far are the clarinets, the trumpets, and then the French horns. Okay, the trumpets are split into three parts. Now the trumpets play a big B-flat major triad, but this is played in inversion, so that also has a third. So now we have two thirds in the chord. So that voicing is from the lowest note up, um, D, F, B flat. So there's a B flat on top. So it's a first inversion B flat major chord that you're playing with the tr trumpets, with the three trumpets. So it's written, it's a three part chord. Okay, so here's the French horns and the trumpet playing together. Okay, so really in the brass, we get a, the first full B flat major chord. And you know, because the way it's orchestrated, that this is. Do, a dominant brass opening. Okay, next is the trombone section. This is played with two trombones and a bass trombone, and it's in unison. Typically, you'll find bass trombone in with things like brass bands, uh, and it's usually played in a trombone section in an orchestra, you usually have three players. Typically, if you're going to have a bass trombone part, it'll uh, double uh, an octave below, or in this case it's unison, but the bass trombone is usually played by the third trombonist, okay? Next we have the tuba. And the tuba typically takes the root as well, so that's playing a B flat. So, in the brass section here, we have an entire B flat major chord, listen. That's really the sound of the chord when you think about it. Next, let's move on to the percussion because in the score, the percussion is placed below the brass, typically, 
and above the strings. The strings are usually at the bottom of the page, okay, in most orchestral scores. The first instrument is the timpani, okay? So the timpani is playing, begins with a triplet roll, a 16th note triplet roll on B flat. You guessed it. Okay, now there's a crescendo on it, as you can hear, and that is a nice big fat B flat. In the triangle, we have a, a tremolo on the triangle. Now, many times triangles are used in rhythmic fashion with uh, muting that can be done with a hand to create rhythmic uh, motifs, or they can simply be done in, in dinner, din dinner bell fashion, like in here with a tremolo. With a tremolo, you'll see three lines above the note, okay, Th that will indicate tremolo. Next is the crash, okay? So, now you'll find that a lot of times at the climax or any big moments in an orchestral piece, which nothing bigger than the opening of Star Wars. Now let's hear the percussion all together. Oh, that feels so good, doesn't it? Let me hear it again. Oh, that's great. Next we go into the string section. Now the string section in this, uh, in the first and second violins, we have unison, but it's unison tremolo on the same B flat. Okay, so you have the two full sections playing a tremolo B flat note like this. With a sforzando. All these parts have sforzando. Now sforzando means a loud attack on it and then it kind of backs off. Bah! Okay, listen. Here's the second violin. Sounds the same because it's the same note. So once again, a big, big B flat. Now, when we get to the violas, the violas are written in alto clef, okay? So the clef is in the middle of the staff, okay? That middle C is in the middle of the clef. So the alto clef is really between the bass and treble clef, okay? So it's essentially moved up. Middle C, which would normally be below the staff, okay, in treble clef, is actually moved to the middle of the staff. These are things that you have to know as an orchestrator, okay? You have to know what the ranges of these instruments are, you have to know which are transposing instruments, and you have to know which instruments are written in different clefs. Now, certain instruments, like the trombone, for example, will go to tenor clef, or the cello can go to tenor clef as well, okay, depending on if it's in a very high range, and you really need to understand what these clefs are. Well, the viola is always written in alto clef, okay, because it's the alto part. Now, it's divided into two parts. It's divided into a D and a B flat. Okay, so here we get our third third in the orchestra. We have one in the French horns, we have one in the trumpets, and we have one in the violas. Otherwise, we've got all B flats, and uh, we have the we have an F in the trumpets, and we have a, an F in the horns. So there's two Fs. Now in the cello, we have a B flat, and in the basses, we have. A B flat down the octave. Okay, now bass and cello are written as the same note, but the bass, the double bass, okay, it sounds an octave lower than is written. The bass, just like a bass guitar and just like a guitar, both these instruments, guitar and bass, sound an octave lower than they are written. When I play the low E on a guitar and I go to the piano and I play that written low E, you say, wow, that's an octave higher than, than what the guitar note is, okay? The guitar note is going to be an octave below the written note. If you were to play the written note E on the piano where it's written, the guitar is going to sound an octave lower than that. The same with the bass, okay? So here is the string section all together playing the opening chord. 
the tremolo strings really add excitement to that opening chord, okay? Now, let's listen to it all together again. Here we go. Makes me jump every time I hear it. Really, really powerful. That crash, the, the triplet um, fill of the timpani into the crash cymbal. It's a really powerful opening, one of the most powerful openings to any piece I can think of. So this is how you orchestrate a chord. So you need to know that you need to know your basic four part SATB part writing rules in order to orchestrate chords for full orchestra properly. I picked this one out because this is a great example of how to orchestrate a major chord because it orchestrates it between the sections, okay? So you have to learn how to write between sections. You have to understand how to write in the woodwinds. You have to understand how to write with the brass and how to write with the strings, okay? So you have to know how to orchestrate within those sections because many times you are writing pieces within sections. Sometimes they will go on by themselves and then another section will come in and depending on, on what your, um, the intensity of the piece is, what sections you have playing together or not. And occasionally, like this, at the climax of pieces or in big moments, you have the entire orchestra playing together. So learning how to score a chord is really important, but you have to learn to score it in sections first. So once again, in this piece, we have, I believe there's, in the opening chord, I believe there's 22 B flats. There are... I want to say two F's and three D's. Now, the three D's, normally you don't have more thirds than fifths, but they're not in powerful instruments, for example. Like, they're in the viola, and the viola is split in half, so half the section is playing, only half the section is playing the D. And that's in the middle of the orchestra. You have to also understand how the orchestra is arranged in order to decide on how you're going to orchestrate the chord. Okay? With the first violins and the cellos being on the outside of the orchestra, they're going to require different treatments than instruments that are in the center and instruments that are naturally louder. The viola is not going to project as well because it's in the center of the orchestra. Okay, so you have to think about these things. When you divide up parts like that, you have to really think about the balance of it. John Williams is a master orchestrator, so he knows he wants to get the sound of B flat out there. So he's really heavy on the roots, not so heavy on the fifths, and even lighter on the thirds, which is fitting right within principles of four-part common practice writing. That's all for now. I'm Rick Beato.